Hello everyone, this is Onscrunt. We are back for a new video. This is going to be completely different for me. Um, this is something new to me. I'm doing an impressions video on three games that I've been playing recently. I was going to do one each for these games, but then sort of because of time and things I've had to do, um, I've sort of rolled them all into one now. So, there we go. So the three games I'm going to be looking at are Worms Revolution, XCOM Enemy Unknown, and Doom 3 BFG Edition. So, hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video and, you know, leave a comment it's to tell me about your experiences with these games if you played them. Right, let's go. So first off, we've got Worms Revolution. Now anyone who knows me knows I'm a fairly big Worms fan. Uh, Worms has been a big part of my childhood, a big part of like my teenage years as well. And I still like them today. Um, I even Let's Played Worms Armageddon earlier, like when I first started my channel. Now this game's got all the regular modes on it that you expect. It's got the single player mode, which has got the uh, campaign mode on. But then it's got uh, the puzzle mode on there as well, which I think was in Worms Armageddon 2. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it was added into there afterwards. But that's kind of cool. The puzzles are kind of cool. Um, it's kind of cool how you pull some of them off. Um, then if you've got your deathmatch mode, you know, your regular versus mode, uh, you've got a force mode, like in uh, Worms Armageddon 2. And uh, there's just a classic mode as well that you can do. And there's still all the cool little customization things from the more recent ones where you can like put hats and hair on your worms, sunglasses. You can give them little trinkets to play with during turns when they're not moving around. And you can change the voices as usual. Gravestones, forts, everything. You can also make formations for your team, which um, you can make a formation that includes like different classes in your team. All the new classes they've added in. They've uh, added in, besides your regular worm, which is just your base worm that's always done this, that, and the other, as always, in the previous games, you've got a heavy worm. The heavy worm, like, he moves slower, he jumps not as far. He does more damage, and I think he can take more hits than a regular worm can. So instead of, like, doing 50 hits, 50 damage to someone with a bazooka, I think he does uh, 60. And so on and so forth. You got a scout worm, and these guys are like a little bit smaller than your regular worms. They can uh, move a little bit faster, and they can jump further than any other worm. Uh, but they're weaker, they do a lot less damage, and they get thrown about a bit more. When they shoot a bazooka at something, I think it does 35 or 40 instead of 50. So it's a big, like, loss of damage for what you're getting. And then you got a scientist worm, which it acts more like a medic than a scientist. I don't know why they made a scientist. They should have done it as a medic. I don't know, it would make more sense. Um, but every time you use the scientist uh, for his turn, all your worms will heal five uh, points of health. But besides that, it just does slightly less damage than the regular worms, and there's nothing really else to him. Now these classes seem really kind of pointless to me because I just find myself using all the normal worms anyway. And the only time you're encouraged to use like any of the class worms is in the puzzle mode where sometimes you'll have to use a heavy worm or you have to use a scout worm. You'll never have to you'll never be forced to use one in a campaign. You just have a regular team in the campaign, which makes no sense. So they don't really encourage you to use these new classes. You can just get away with using a standard team and you just can win. It just seems really silly. Another thing they've added into the game, they've added in water physics. You'll find water, standing water on the maps in like puddles or underground things. Little underground cavern things. There's also some objects that can release water, like water bottles or uh, science beakers. And uh, that will spread water across the map. The water is kind of cool because you can push people around with it and you can drown people with it. Um, if you sit in the water, you lose five points of health each turn. So it's sort of bad to stay in the water at all times. Now, this is probably the best thing about this game. Um, 
I can't really see any flaws with it. I, I think the water is a really great feature. This is something that I'm surprised I never did a lot sooner. And then the only other new thing I can think of is... Um, you got your objects on the map, which you can use to drop on enemies, or you can use as cover. You can make bridges out of them. You can move them around with certain new weapons. And some of them just have effects as well, like one might release a bit of poison gas cloud uh, and poison one of your worms. Or one will release water, one will explode and send fire everywhere. It's... They're pretty cool, but um, I I'm not sure about them. So what do I think about this game? I think as a new standalone Worms game, it is not great. And uh, that's hard for me to say, really, because I am a huge fan of Worms. And I've grown up with Worms, played lots of Worms games. I think I've played them all now. I might not have played Worms World Party. But I mean, like, the, um, it's cool that they've done this um, 2D look again, instead of doing the 3D Worms games that they've done a couple of times. But overall, um, I don't know, it's not really much new. I think really about the best part of the game besides water physics is um, having Matt Berry from IT Crowd doing the narration for the single player. And that's about it, really. There's nothing else. It's just a standard Worms game. I mean, it could have been so much better as well. I think, for it is, it's not worth the... Is it 1,200 Microsoft points it was? Uh, it's not worth the money for the price. Maybe if it was 800 it'd be a bit better, but I think for 1,200 points or $15 on PlayStation or Steam or whatever, I don't think it's worth it. But it's, it's a solid Worms game, I just don't know if I could recommend it to newcomers or to hardcore Worms fans, unless it comes down in price. I think really if you're looking to buy a Worms game you should buy Worms Armageddon 2 which is fairly cheap now on the Xbox Live Arcade or PlayStation Network. I think you can get it on Steam as well. That's really about the best one that's came out in recent times and uh, that one is a pretty great game. Leave this to me. I'll make them sing.